I reviewed the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro last October, and my conclusion was that it was a very good printer, with a monochrome screen that allowed for faster prints than the previous Mars models, in exchange for a bit higher price tag. And my Mars 2 Pro is still going strong for the record. This time we're going to be looking at the next model in the Mars line, the Mars 3. It's very similar to the Mars 2 Pro in a number of ways, as we will see, but in terms of its appearance, it is a bit different than all the other Mars models. Now, most small resin printers seem to use more or less the same design, with a base that contains the electronics on the bottom, and a squarish clear acrylic cover that goes on top of the build area. The Mars 3, on the other hand, uses a much more rounded look for both the base and the acrylic cover. And while this doesn't really affect functionality, it is a pretty cool look. Aside from some air vents, there's nothing on the sides, and the only thing on the back is the power jack. The first thing I noticed when opening up the printer was that unlike every other resin printer I have, the base is made of plastic. It's a fairly sturdy seeming plastic, but it does have a little bit of give to it, and in all honesty, it does feel a little bit cheap compared to the solid metal bases of my other printers. Speaking of cheap feeling, they've replaced the solid feeling power switch on the previous machines with this power button. It doesn't feel or sound very nice to press, and I personally prefer a switch to a button, but I guess this does look more attractive if you're going to be putting everything on the front of the machine like this. In addition to the power button, there's also a USB port here on the front, which is my preferred location. I just think it's the most convenient. The LCD touchscreen is more or less the same as on the other Mars models, and it's perfectly fine and easy to use, although I did find that the screen kind of pushes inward a little bit here, and even makes a little bit of noise, which doesn't really inspire confidence. It seems pretty clear that Elegoo has been doing some cost-cutting with this machine to reach a certain price point, but I think also the key parts of the machine, such as the resin vat here, are nice and solid. This is made out of aluminum and seems well designed for the most part, although it lacks a pouring spout of any kind. Uh, it does have little handles and, and also feet on the bottom. That's a feature that they're carrying over from the Saturn. The top of the machine, of course, and the Z-axis uh, assembly there is all made of metal as well, so I don't really have a lot of concerns about the functionality of the machine. Some other YouTubers have pointed out that this machine seems to have some Z-axis wobble, so that the vertical bar there that makes the print bed go up and down kind of wobbles, especially when it's printing the first uh, couple inches worth of a print. I couldn't really see this at all when I was looking at it in real time, but when I sped up my footage, I could see that the vertical axis there was kind of wobbling around a little bit. It doesn't seem to affect print quality at all, so I'm not really sure if this is worth getting upset about, but I guess it's worth pointing out. So there definitely are some areas where the previous models have the advantage in terms of the type and uh, quality of the materials used, I think. But of course that's not the entire story. The Mars 3 has quite a few advantages over the previous models. So if we compare the size of the build plate here with that of the original Mars printer, you can see there is quite a noticeable difference in size. And as I mentioned before, even though you may not think that this is a large difference, uh, it's very useful in practice to have a bigger build plate like that. Now this one here is the Mars 2 Pro and it's still quite a bit larger as you can probably tell. We can also compare it with the Saturn just for fun and of course the Mars 3 doesn't quite measure up to the Saturn in terms of size but still uh, I think it's a, a pretty decent size actually and gives you certainly uh, more flexibility than the original Mars did for sure. Maybe the biggest difference between this and the previous Mars 2 Pro is the screen, however. It's the same kind of monochrome screen, so it's going to be quite fast at printing, but it is a 4K screen instead of the so-called 2K screen that the Mars 2 Pro used. In theory, this increase in resolution should get you more detailed prints. However, in my own testing, I can't really say that I've seen a major difference in quality between the Mars 3 and the previous Elegoo printers. I originally thought of doing some sort of quality comparison between the printers, but I just can't really see much of a difference at all. And I'm going to leave a link to Uncle Jesse's video about this very topic in the video description, where he does go through and prints a bunch of things on a number of different printers. And 
I think his conclusion was essentially that there is a modest improvement in detail, but it's very subtle. And that goes along with my own findings as well. The extra resolution is, of course, very welcome, but I wouldn't buy this, say, as an upgrade to a previous Mars printer, thinking you're going to see amazing difference in print quality, because I just don't think you're going to see it. I think you might see some improvement in the smoothness of the surfaces and so forth, as opposed to an actual increase in detail, which is, to be fair, uh, something that you would want, but may not be immediately obvious. So for this review, I decided to print one large multi-part model, and that's this Cthulhu model that I got from CG Trader. I'll put the link in the video description. Uh, it's originally intended to be printed uh, quite a bit bigger than this, I believe, but this is about as big as I could print it on this printer. And I think it came out quite well overall. I haven't actually glued a lot of it together yet because I'm going to be painting the water section here separate from the body and the rest of the base. Uh, the idea is that some of the water will be painted to look like rocks and then the rest of it will remain transparent water and I'm, I'm really hoping it'll look really cool. Uh, if you look at some of the details like on the wings here you can see these sort of veins and um, other details that I think came through really well. So I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out. If you look at this uh, plate on the front, you can even make out some of the lettering there. And the, uh, the sailboat is crazy small and detailed as well. So I do look forward to uh, painting this guy up. I did have to cut all the little pegs that are intended to help the parts sort of slot together. That's been a problem with basically every multi-part model that I've printed in the past as well. I also, in a previous video, designed and printed these Power of the Force style coins for Java, and if you're interested in that, I suggest you check that video out. But overall, these came out quite well. I did have a few minor quality issues with some horizontal lines that crept into the prints from time to time, and I'm not entirely sure what causes that. After printing, I painted the coins with some silver chrome spray paint, and I think they came out looking pretty darn good, actually. Check out that video if you'd like to know more about that process. I also printed a number of models from Black Remnant. This is their uh, mechanical slug model, which is actually Gracchus the Hut from the Expanded Universe. These legs here, kind of robotic legs that he has, are printed separately and then glued onto the body, but I thought uh, this came out really well as well. You can see a lot of nice detail there, especially for the size, and I think this one will be fun to paint up as well. He has, uh, Black Remnant has a number of Java-related models that I decided to, to try printing, including this Bib Fortuna, who, despite his size, is uh, nearly perfect. And, you know, even here on the bottom, you can see his feet, all the little wrinkles in his leku, and his hand in particular, I thought was impressive. We also have uh, Effant Moan. Maybe not quite as detailed of a model, but still it's nice to have one of him. He also has several Gamorian guard models that uh, I printed as well. So you can see this is roughly the size you might use for some kind of wargaming model and definitely has uh, the level of quality you would expect for that kind of miniature. So I really don't have any complaints about the quality that this printer can produce, but there are some other things that we do need to think about. I've been talking a lot about the details of the physical machine here and how it differs from the previous models, but actually the most important thing that I really need to talk about has nothing to do with the machine itself and everything to do with the software that you use to get models onto it. With previous Elegoo printers, you could use any compatible slicing software to get your models onto the printer, but with the Mars 3, you are confined to just using Cheetobox as your slicer, so you can't use something like Lychee Slicer instead. That's bad enough, but another issue is that Cheetu Systems, the maker of Cheetobox, is fairly aggressively trying to monetize their slicer software by introducing Cheetobox Pro. And uh, that's $169 a year subscription service. You do get one year 
free, quote unquote, with this printer if you buy it. But after that, you'll have to either use Cheetahbox Basic or pay $169 a year. And honestly, $169 as into 3D printing as I am, $169 a year subscription is pretty difficult to swallow for me. Now, I should say I haven't actually been able to use Cheetahbox Pro yet because the Mac version of it is not yet ready. So I've been using Cheetahbox Basic for everything on this video that you see, and it works more or less okay, pretty much like the previous versions of Cheetahbox, although the performance on the Mac version is a little bit spotty, to say the least. There is the concern that in the future, Cheetah systems will sort of be incentivized to make Cheetahbox Basic not very good at all, and, uh, you know, kind of encourage everyone to use Cheetahbox Pro and its uh, annual subscription fee. Recently, after some outcry about this, Cheeto Systems did come out with a statement saying that they're going to be uh, releasing a software development kit of some kind, allowing third parties to somehow tie in with Cheeto Box, but it's really unclear where that's going at this point. One other thing I should mention is that Cheeto Box Basic, and I assume Cheeto Box Pro, the new ones, are not actually directly compatible with the older models of Elegoo printers unless you give them a firmware update. I am always kind of reluctant to use firmware updates when I don't have to, so at the moment I have just been uh, using both the old and new versions of Cheetahbox, and aside from some confusion occasionally about which program I'm using and which one I should use for which printer, it does work okay, at least on the Mac, but it's not ideal. So where does that leave us with regard to my conclusion about the Mars 3? It's a little bit complicated because I think it's a good quality printer. I'm happy with the results I'm getting from it and despite a few obvious cost-cutting measures in its construction, I think it's fine physically. The only thing I'm concerned about is this Cheetah Box situation because there's still a lot of uncertainty about whether you're really going to be able to use third-party slicers, for example, and you could see a potential future in a couple of years where Cheetah Box Basic is just really, really, really basic and you really need Pro if you want to do anything serious and you're not even able to use a third-party slicer like Lychee Slicer. So I guess my conclusion is that you might want to wait and see a little bit before buying into the Mars 3. I would say this is probably a bit less of an issue for people who are buying this as their first printer because they won't have to worry about uh, compatibility with their other printers. They won't probably have used a third-party slicer like Lychee Slicer. I will say that you can now buy the Mars 2 Pro for significantly less than the Mars 3's retail price of $300. And so maybe that's worth looking into because that would have better uh, sort of compatibility with various slicers. And the quality is really not that much different. I hope this helped make some sense of what is kind of a difficult and confusing situation with regard to this printer. Uh, I'd be interested to know in the comments if you're thinking about getting one or what your thoughts are about the whole situation. Remember to check the video description for links to things like the models that I used in this video. And of course, I can't forget to mention that this video, like all my videos, was brought to you with the help of my patrons from Patreon, including Angelica Brady and these Palace VIPs right here. Click the link in the video description to see how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month. Thanks for watching.